In my previous videos, I always love to talk about getting access, C2 frameworks, combine that with malware development and so on, but we missed the slight point and that point is called persistence. Now we're gonna combine malware development with persistence because it's super important to ensure that when your beacon pops up, it will be there no matter what happens. In this video, we're gonna talk about two types of persistent techniques. The two types are based on what privileges you have on the targeted machine. If you have admi administrative privileges, you can go with persistence like the one you see on the screen. But if you have a user land privileges, we're gonna show something different later in that video. Now, the persistence you see on the screen is extremely simple but effective. It modifies a register key, which allows us to execute a specific binary on the system when the a user signs in or the system boots up. We can say it like that. Now there's a registry key. If you open up your reg editor by typing Windows R and typing reg edit, if you open that and go to the path, HQ local machine, software, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version, and WinLogon, there's a key called shell. Now this is a key which is needed into the Windows OS and by default, this key is set to explore.txt. What that means is that when you sign in into your machine, the explorer.txt is going to automatically boot up, which is going to allow you to operate with Windows. Now, we can simultaneously put custom binaries into that registry key, but keep in mind that it's extremely important to keep explorer.txt, otherwise the system will break. Now, the following piece of code does that automatically for you, and it's a very, very simple code in C which uses two Windows APIs. We have reg open key XA, which is going to navigate to that path, to that long path we just showcased. And then we have the reg set value XA, which is going to actually set the value of the shell registry key. Now keep in mind that the new value part explore.txt and partial.txt is important to keep the syntax like that because as I mentioned, if you specify your persistence binary there, the explore.txt should still get executed. Now, if you compile this binary there and if you open it with a standard PowerShell application, it's not gonna work. The reason for that is it will need a specific access right. So if I open that in a normal PowerShell window, you can see that it's not working. By the way, the error code five, generally Windows means access denied, so keep that in mind. But if I open that with a PowerShell with admin privileges, you can see that now the registry key are successfully tweaked. Now let's test that I want to sign out, so my user and sign out, all right? And when I sign in, I should, in theory, see the PowerShell window up and running. And voila. Now, keep in mind that in real scenario, you want to hide your malware better, but that's how you can generally decide what to execute on your machine startup. All right, but now there's a question, what happens if I don't have admin privileges? What happens if I get a beacon from a standard user? Well, let's see that now. Before we move on into the user land persistence, I want to say massive, massive thanks to all of my Patreon sponsors, you guys rock and have no idea how much I appreciate you. If you have further appreciation to the channel as well, you can become my Patreon where you can get access to my private packer, Shadowburn, my private notes and also some private hidden gems. You can also have the ability to request videos on demand. So. See you there and moving on. Establishing persistence from a user standpoint is quite a bit different and now we need to operate from a completely different hive because that's where we can write, right? Recently, me and Goku Melong did a nice workshop on Beside Sophia 2024 about persistence and malware development. So you can click the link in the description and see the materials. I hope you enjoy them. There, he showcased various persistent methods about establishing persistence on a system and user level. There are a lot of options, why like setting up persistence for a screensaver and so on. But I ended up choosing the one which is similar to the previous example. So there's a registry key called HKey current user software, Microsoft, Windows, current version and run. And all the registry key that are stored there are going to get executed automatically as the user logs in. Keep in mind that this is not a persistent level on system aspect, but only on user aspect. And that means that if you compromise a user and establish this, this persistence, if another user walks into the machine, this would not get executed. 
But never mind, let's say we are in a scenario where we compromised a low privileged user and now we want to establish persistence and we don't have admin rights. In that case, you can use the following POC. Now, this is what's so similar code we have invoking the very same Windows APIs, but now first the path has changed and second, the argument has changed a little because here we don't modify a key which is already there, but we create a new one and then save it to the corresponding folder. Now, as I mentioned, the Windows APIs key are the same. You just have to tweak the, the virus there. I can just compile. And now my PowerShell window there is just a standard one. I'm not an admin, I'm just a regular user. If I execute the binary there, we can see that the registry keys are successfully added. And if I go back and refresh the page, we can see that now we have a key called test, which points to PowerShell.txt. Now let's repeat the process, sign the user out, resign him back again, and let's see if we're gonna get the PowerShell window. And voila, we have our PowerShell window up and ready. Now keep in mind that there are endless opportunities about persistence and endless sway on how you can set such things up. When it comes to system level persistence or user level persistence, different kind of things can be used, but the goal at the end is, again, similar. In the previous video, I showcased how we can set up persistence using shortcut links, but I found this one to be better because first, it's easier to programmatically insert them into your packer or binary and so on. Then second, it's actually better because it's more evasive. Now, in the first persistence we showcased before, we set up a shortcut links, which can be tricky, but here we generally, I think it's considered more OPSEC safe. Now, don't get me wrong, when doing such persistent tricks, you can get detected, you can get caught by AVs or VDRs if they're watching the registry keys, which they often do. So don't take these, these, these techniques for granted, but I'm sure that they can help.